Welcome to the MUFG Global Markets Podcast. I'm John Cook, and I'm joined today by Takehiro Sakito, Chief Japan Strategist for MUFG. It's Monday, November 8th, 2021. Welcome back to the podcast, Sakito-san. Good to be back. Always good to have you. Uh, so following the ruling coalition's win, Prime Minister Kishida's second administration is, start, is set to start on November 10th. Can you please take our listeners through the latest developments there and market implications? Okay. Prime Minister Kishida convened a special diet session on November 10th, and his second administration will be launched. Toshimitsu Motegi has replaced Akira Amari as Secretary General of the LDP following the latter loss in the lower house elections on October 31st. And Yoshimasa Hayashi will replace Motegi as foreign minister. The change in lineup is expected to strengthen Japan's policy management in foreign affairs and the LDP's organizational management ahead of next summer's upper house elections. The contours of economic policy especially the Prime Minister Kishida's new type of capitalism, will take shape over this month and next. Both the looting and opposition parties stress distribution of wealth during the campaign period leading up to the elections. Yet, there was mostly no policy discussion regarding fiscal funding resources. Prime Minister Kishida will likely be filling in the shading of the fiscal year 22 budget and our JGP issuance plans. In late December, market speculation about increased JGP issuances may build until the plans released, but political risk has ebbed for now. We therefore revised our view for yen swap rates in November from upward bias to a neutral bias. The MRF has shifted gears and has decided to cut issuances of TDBs, especially three months TDBs in November. Political risk has ebbed and the MRF no longer has to worry about additional fiscal financing. This suggests that global bond investors should buy TDBs sooner rather than later. All that being said, we expect the BOJ to scale back TDP purchases in Yenism with a reduction in issuances. Okay, so yeah, so you're a little bit more bullish on JGBs just given the specter of, of increased supply is sort of diminished a little bit. Um, and yes. well noted on the, you know, on global investors buying JGBs sooner rather than later, I, I feel like the, um, the you know, the, well, I guess this takes us into our next question, which is the basis. Um, so the, the basis, you know, like other markets, moves in the cross currency basis have been extreme as of late. Um, you know, they widened, you know, extremely significantly, um, which was a perplexing move given all the USD sloshing around in the system. And then they've, you know, they've come in significantly since then. So I guess the question is what's, you know, what's going on? What's, what's driving that, that extreme price action? Yen basis has started to tighten a yen over the past week. The widening in a yen basis since October took overseas investors by supplies and they reacted by encouraging engaging in a JGB arbitrage rather quickly. We think that yen basis moves has been, have been due to both Japanese and overseas investors factors. Firstly, Japanese tightened yen basis with FDI position unwinding slightly. And uh, secondly, the foreign companies global yen bond issuances while in yen basis. Yen basis is working against both Japanese and foreign investors, investing flows. Over the near term, we think demand among foreigners for TDVs to be strong. We advise overseas investors to reconsider their capacity for cross-border trading, not only for TDV cross-currency arbitrage trades, but also for medium-term JGVs, and also for using Yen report trading. Separately, the MOF has 
slightly raised its projection for six months TDV issuances for October by 100 billion yen. However, six months down yen forward has quickly tightened after widening. Overseas investors are already factoring in year-end premiums for both the current year and December, as well as the fiscal year and March. And they have been quickly jumping in as room for JGB arbitrage has opened. It may be best for Japanese investors to hedge currency risk given the speed of the falling JGB arbitrage trading. If Japanese investors do not rush with down asset funding, then down yen will likely rise at a gradual pace and an exposed recovery and yen repatriation flows could limit top side for down yen. Thanks. That's that's helpful. I mean, um, you know, so I guess that makes sense. You have some position on ones related to FDI. You know, some some you know which uh, which offsets you know some of that that samurai issuance. Um, I'd also point out, you know, there's been a pretty good correlation with kind of the front end of the U.S. curve and you know and the basis. You know, that at some point we we're pricing in two hikes. I think that was coincident with the widening. The market's now gone back to sorry, two and a half hikes for next year. Now the market's gone back to two hikes and the basis has, has come in. So, you know, a, a lot of different factors at, at play there. Um, but let's let's switch topics and move on um, specifically to Japanese pension funds, which have recently released investment results. I'm curious what these results say about Japanese investor activity in the last quarter, as well as suggest about future cross-border flows. Okay. Japanese pension funds released their July to September investment results last week, and there was a great deal of tension on both Japanese and foreigners. The figures showed that JGB and Japan stock investing performances have improved while foreign bond and stock performances were negative. Japanese pension fund investing flows have been diversifying in recent years after being skewed toward JGBs. And they are now split roughly half and a half among yen and non-yen assets and half and a half among stocks and bonds. Pension funds have been adjusting the weightings of their investing flows and they may unload foreign bonds and foreign stocks when buying is up and also buy more foreign bonds and foreign stocks when Dian falls. In our view, Japanese investing flows have been stabilizing global financial markets. We expect Japanese pension funds to adjust their asset weightings regardless of closely asset performance. We'll be watching how pension funds approach, firstly, alternative investing, and also, secondly, remedy bonds. Moreover, Japan's 10 trillion yen university fund will take a more active managed approach starting next spring. And we will be watching the investing flows of the university fund from next spring. Then this would also help to stabilize the global financial markets. Japanese pension funds and university funds are huge and should continue to be watched closely. Okay, so so pension funds, after reallocating their portfolio to more risky assets and more foreign assets, you know, whatever last year, the year before, they're kind of at their new target weighting. So maybe maybe only moves at the margin there, but that the university fund certainly sounds like it's worth worth watching. Um, but I think we're about out of time, so let's wrap things up. Um, how about you hit our listeners with your outlook for yen rate, spot dollar yen, and yen basis? You was fed. A November FMC meeting decided to start tapering dovish as part of the market consensus. Fed Chair Jerome Powell tampered down on a speculation about rate hikes beginning soon, and U.S. stocks reacted by rising. Dow yen flattened after dollar and the yen weakened. Mid October. 
Merchants trade data from the Ministry of Finance showed that Japan had a trade deficit of 483 billion yen after registering a trade surplus of 93 billion yen early in the month. Exports in early October rose by 8% year over year, then accelerated to 11% in mid months. But Input growth jumped from up 11% year-over-year year to up 31% year-over-year. Year. Yen selling by Japanese importers has been strong. We expect a bullish buy and sold on yen with a 2.5 yen trading range, 113 to 115.50. The yen yield curve has flattened with a contour of fiscal spending and our JGB issuances still uncertain. We view Kishida's continuance in office as alleviating many unknowns and expect a neural bias for yen swap rates. The widen in a yen basis on outward investing by Japanese quickly started to tighten again because of arbitrage of the strength and demand for JGB asset swaps among foreigners. Japanese direct invest outward investing is also strong, and the demand for JGB asset swaps is keen among global bond investors. Ministry of Finance Weekly Securities Flow data released on November 5th shows that Japanese unloaded on net 658 billion yen of overseas securities. As Foreigners unloaded on net 863 billion yen of Japanese securities between October 24th to Anna 30th. Japanese unloaded on net 525 billion yen of medium to long term foreign bonds on par with the 472 billion yen of Japanese medium to long term bonds unloaded by foreigners. Japanese and foreign investing flows are likely to counter one another for the time being. The front end of the US Treasury curve has been low and stable, and a supply and demand for dollar in the New York market is loose. Over the near term, we expect overseas investors with their abundance of dollar funds to shift the weighting of they are trading to JGB arbitrages with down yen forward and basis. We expect foreigners to dominate and yen basis to return to neural bias from widening. Okay, so you're bullish on dollar yen and neutral on JGBs and basis. Um, yes. You know, that, okay, perfect. So that, that that's great stuff, Sakito san as, as always. And to our listeners, I would highlight that Sakito is going to be writing up the September balance of payment and the October international transaction securities data. So look for that uh, report. And again, Sakito san thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, John. And thank you for listening to the MUFG Global Markets Podcast. Rate, review, and subscribe on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts and reach out to your MUFG sales rep for any further information. Check back soon for more insights from the Global Markets Research Team.